after the golden age of piracy had ended, there was one man who terrorized ships in the waters off the Gulf Coast, instilling fear into the hearts of men when they saw the black flag raised and heard the name Gasparilla. Jose Gaspar lived a privileged life. He was born into a wealthy Spanish family in the year 1756, but during his youth, he would find himself drawn to criminal behavior, even kidnapping a young girl and holding her for ransom. However, after he was caught, the authorities gave him an ultimatum, either join the Spanish Royal Navy or go straight to prison. And thus began his life of storied adventures on the high seas. The Navy assigned him to a ship called the Florida Blanca, and by the age of 27, Gaspar had risen through the ranks after his commanders observed his great skills in tactics and weaponry. Gaspar was named the naval representative in the court of King Charles III of Spain, and soon gained the reputation as a romancer, charming many women along the way, including the daughter-in-law of the king, Maria Luisa. But Gaspar, much like Maria Luisa, was an unfaithful lover, and continued to pursue other women during their courtship. And when Maria Luisa confronted him in a jealous rage, he confirmed her suspicions. He then showed no remorse for his actions and left the princess brokenhearted. But hell hath no fury like a woman scorned, so Maria Luisa devised a plan for revenge. She formed an alliance with the prime minister and arranged to have the Spanish crown jewel stolen with the intent of framing Gaspar. The plan was now in motion, and rumors spread around court with Maria Luisa accusing Gaspar of the crime. He needed to act quickly, knowing that despite his innocence, it was the Crown's word against his. If he were caught, he would surely be hung for treason. So with no other options, Gaspar and a band of escaped prisoners stormed the Florida Blanca and commandeered the ship. He instated himself as captain and changed his name to Gasparilla set sail for the Florida coast, never to return to his homeland, vowing to pillage and plunder any ship that flew the Spanish flag. He became the scourge of the Seven Seas, along with his gang of cutthroat killers, terrorizing merchant ships in the Caribbean, demanding that captured crews either join the ranks or walk the plank. During one of their raids, he encountered an old friend from the Spanish Navy, Captain Menendez. But instead of forcing him to suffer the same fate the others had, he spared his life and treated him like a friend and confidant. <laughs> then, one night, a mutinous crew member snuck up behind Gasparilla. Menendez saw this and tackled the assailant, but during the struggle, both men suffered mortal wounds. And so Menendez had bravely given his own life for Gasparilla's. He was forever grateful for the sacrifice that his friend made and he continued to stock vessels across the sea. And during one of those raids, he captured an English ship, and on board was a beautiful young woman named Anne Jeffrey, who caught Gasparilla's attention. It didn't take long for the captain to fall madly in love with her, asking for her hand in marriage, but it wasn't meant to be. On the day he proposed to her, she rejected him, confessing her love for one of Gasparilla's youngest men, Batista. The captain was heartbroken, but surprisingly, out of his love for her, he spared them from a watery death and even provided them with safe passage back to England. Gasparilla was never the same, and as the years passed, he reflected back on his life and was now ready to retire. After all, he had amassed a great fortune and no longer held a vendetta against Spain. But then, on the horizon, he spotted a British ship and couldn't resist one last plunder. They moved within range, and just as they were about to strike, the Union Jack was lowered, and what rose struck fear among the crew. This was no British merchant ship. It was the USS Enterprise, an American pirate hunting schooner. A bloody broadside ensued. It was now a matter of life or death. Cannonballs ripped through the hull of Gasparilla's ship. The masts and the sails were on fire. The crew was suffering heavy casualties. This was Gasparilla's final stand. The Enterprise prepared to board the ship. And there, at the bow, behind a veil of smoke, was Gasparilla chained to an anchor. He then threw it into the sea and proclaimed, Gasparilla dies by his own hand, not the enemy's. His body plunged into the dark abyss. 
his reign over the high seas had come to an end. The legend of Gasparilla was passed down by Juan Gomez, who claimed to be a crew member aboard the ship during its final battle. And to this day, the city of Tampa, Florida, holds an annual festival in his honor, making Gasparilla one of the most celebrated folklore figures in history.